Hello, good afternoon, one and all. I can see over a um, hundred uh, participants joining in. Uh, welcome to each and every one of you. Uh, let me introduce and welcome our panelists to our participants. Uh, a very warm welcome to Father Joby Joseph, who is the rector, St. Anthony's College. Uh, I take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome also to Father Jovetius Nongse, uh, who is the vice principal of the college. I also take this opportunity to extend a warm welcome to Dr. Uttam Saikya. Sir, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Dr. Uttam Saikya is the guest speaker today. And we also have with us members of the Meghalaya Biodiversity Board. Uh, I welcome them. And I think we have Dr. Sankha Deep Tadde, who's a scientist in the Meghalaya uh, Biodiversity Board. Uh, we also have uh, members from the forest department, I think Mr. N. Uh, Loikham, IFS, uh, he's a conservator of Forest Khasi Jainte Hills, um, Megalia. And uh, we extend a warm welcome to uh, the faculty of uh, the zoology department, who is the organizing uh, department along with St. Anthony's College um, in collaboration with the Meghalaya Biodiversity uh, Board Government of Meghalaya. And of course, to our participants, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for being here. I think, uh, do we have members of the, uh, of the press as well? Uh, if we do, a very warm welcome to them as well. Um, biodiversity is one of the many wonders of the world. Um, our global ecosystem is intricate and that calls for understanding of it. Um, this is especially relevant as we speak because we are conducting this webinar against a very grim backdrop that reminds us at an early basis that when we do not invest in biodiversity and conservation of biodiversity, we are left with, and I quote, a tax bill from Earth that could wipe us out. In today's webinar, we observe the International Day for Biodiversity uh, by moving a little closer towards understanding what it means and its immense significance in our lives. Uh, the slogan for this year's World Bio Biodiversity Day is we're part of the solution, which mirrors uh, the themes of the new global biodiversity framework, uh, particularly the 2050 vision of living in harmony with nature. I once again welcome each and every one. And I would like, with that, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. B. Massar, Faculty Department of Zoology, uh, for the welcome address. Um, Dr. Bash Bashida Massar, ma'am, over to you. Ma'am uh, Ma Bashida, can you hear us? 
I'm supposed to start with a prayer. So shall we begin with a prayer, Mama Manda? Oh, all right, Father. Uh, Father, Father Joby Joseph Rector will lead us in prayer. All right. Okay. Uh, dear friends, uh, on this day, as we come together on this day of International Day of Biodiversity, I think it's fitting that we come together. We turn to the Lord who creates this universe, who sustains us, and who is our caretaker in all in all. We turn to the Lord in prayer. As we bow our heads in prayer, we make presents ourselves in the presence of God. We ask the Lord to preserve all of us. We remember the many who have departed, especially because of the pandemic, many who are affected, many who are in the hospitals. We remember many are dear and dear ones who may have departed. We remember the mother of Brother Albert, our principal, mother of Kong Thered, who expired this yesterday evening, and many others. And we turn to the Lord to give us consolation, prayer, and support, and to preserve us, the Lord who consoles us. We listen to a reading from the Holy Scripture, from the Bible, book of Psalms, Psalm number 8. Lord, when I look at your heavens, the work of your hands, the moon, the stars, the world you, that you arrange, what are human beings that you care for us, mere mortals that you look after us, you have made us a little less than God and crowned us with glory and honor. You have given us dominion over the work of your hands. You have put all things under our feet, the sheep, the oxen, the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. O Lord, how sovereign, how majestic is your name through all the earth. God our Father, we thank you for the wonderful universe that you have made for us. How you preserve it, how you look after us. Lord, may we, as little gods in this master universe, may we preserve it, may we conserve it for a better world tomorrow. That all that we do, that our actions bear its consequence on this universe may it positively contribute to the growth and sustenance and conserving of all that is yours, all that you have created. Bless us in this webinar that will become an opening for all of us, that we are filled with your wisdom, that we learn to respect your creation. We learn to bring all that is earthly to the glory of your world up in heaven. In your precious name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Father. Uh, I now invite Dr. Bashida Masar for the welcome address. Yes, uh, ma'am, ma'am Bashida, over to you. Yeah, okay, uh, ma'am Amanda, can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear, ma'am. Okay. Yes, yes. So sorry, sorry for that uh, hiccup. So uh, good afternoon to one and all. Uh, we are gathered here today, the 22nd of May, 2021, to celebrate the International Day for Biological Diversity through this webinar on new species discoveries in Meghalaya and the importance of conservation. So on behalf of the organizing team, the Meghalaya Biodiversity Board, Government of Meghalaya, and the Department of Zoology, St. Anthony's College, Shillong, I extend my warmest welcome to each one of you, all the participants, wherever you are, whether abroad like friends in the Netherlands or right here in Shillong, wherever you are, whether you are sitting comfortably in your sofa or couch or sitting on a hilltop to get a signal, we appreciate your presence. In this current situation, your participation in this webinar through this Zoom platform, 
our students, teachers, our students, our teachers, and scientists, resource persons, and management is the best way to show that we are part of the solution in our efforts to know, appreciate, and conserve our biological diversity. So once again, welcome to each one of you. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Amanda. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am Bashida. Um, I now move uh, on to invite Dr. Sankha Deepta De, who is uh, a scientist in the Meghalaya Biodiversity uh, Board. Sir, so I invite you to please uh, give your address. Thank you. Uh, my myself, uh, technical executive of the uh, uh, Meghalaya Biodiversity Board, uh, want to give a brief introduction about the uh, International Day for Bi Biological Diversity and some of the major activities of the board. Uh, so uh, once again, good afternoon to all the panelists and the participants. So I would like to show a, a brief PPT, uh, so it will be better. So I'd like to share my screen. So, uh, so am I audible? Hello? Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the, is the screen visible? Yes, it is. Okay. So, uh, 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 shall I start? I am starting. Okay. All right. Sir. So, um, uh, International Day for Biological Diversity, IDB is celebrated uh, every year in uh, 196 countries, which, uh, which are party to the Convention on Biological Diversity um, on May 22nd. And United Nations has proclaimed May 22nd as the International Day for Biological Diversity to increase understanding and awareness of biodiversity issues. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this year, uh, uh, the theme is we are part of the solution. The slogan was chosen to be in condition of the last year mo moment generated last year under uh, under the overarching thing, our solutions are in nature, which served as a reminder that biodiversity remains the answer to several sustainable developmental challenges. Uh, since the board inception in 2012, every year uh, we celebrate uh, this uh, day uh, throughout the state in all the 11 districts uh, of Meghalaya and the main event is celebrated at State Center Library. Uh, given the ongoing pandemic, Meghalaya Biodiversity Board is commemorating uh, this day along with the rest of the world through only online uh, only campaign to create awareness and promote biodiversity conservation. Uh, the board uh, is collaborating with the Department of Zoology, St. Anthony's College to organize webinars and quiz competition for the participants throughout the state. Uh, Synod College is conducting, uh, already conducted a uh, webinar for college students and Queeny Secondary School is also conducting uh, virtual competitions on biodiversity to commemorate this day. Uh, the board is also conducting photography photography competition on the theme people and nature in the state. Um, in all the 11 districts of the state, the board is observing this day with the help of uh, distinct nodal officers concerned in the area of their jurisdiction by collaborating with the local schools, colleges, and biodiversity management committees. Uh, the Meghalaya is rich in biodiversity, traditional knowledge, and culture. Many rare endemic and endangered species of flora and fauna are naturally thriving here. However, of late, the biodiversity of the state has become vulnerable uh, due to factors like uh, forest degradation, mining, soil erosion, water pollution, and urbanization. Creating awareness among all the stakeholders is the first and foremost step in safeguarding the valuable biodiversity uh, from these threats. Um, uh, so I would like to um, uh, brief about some of the important activities of the board. Uh, the board has formed uh, uh, about 5,697 biodiversity management committees 
uh, in the state and uh, 5,535 PBRs or people by diversity registers in the state. The board is conducting uh, uh, throughout the state um, awareness program workshop meetings uh, for formation of BMCs, uh, PBRs, and also implementation of the access and benefit sharing uh, mechanism uh, in the state as per the Biological Diversity Act. Uh, the board has now as an in institutional structure in place and uh, every district now has a technical support group and district nodal officer. Uh, the board has constituted seven thematic expert committees uh, to assist the board, uh, which expertise um, in different uh, uh, fields. Uh, uh, the board has completed uh, uh, um, uh, the um, documentation of Meghalaya State Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan and it will be released shortly. It was really uh, supposed to be released today, but due to this pandemic, it has been delayed. Um, the Meghalaya Biodiversity Board nominated uh, a small village uh, from East Cass Hill, uh, which is known as Mokrinot uh, Village. Um, a self-help group from there uh, has been conserving and uh, uh, protecting and uh, uh, a root bridge in uh, in Peninsula, uh, Peninsula in Mokinot village. And it is the longest root bridge in Meghalaya of 52 uh, meters. So the board nominated uh, this group uh, uh, for India Biodiversity Awards in 2016. So due to their preservation efforts, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, self-help group from Mokinot got uh, um, this award, India Biodiversity Award uh, for preservation. Uh, of biodiversity and the root bridge, and they got award of one lakh from UNDP. Uh, every year uh, from Siberia, thousands of Amur falcons, they migrate to South Africa. And uh, on the way, they stop over to Nagaland. And from the past few years, they're also stopping in a Umru village in Riboy district bordering Assam. So when they first came uh, within a few years, uh, thousands of their of these birds were posed for meat. They were killed um, uh, for meat and uh, for illegal trade. But as after seeing this, the board, uh, the board, the staff of the board, we went there. We formed a BMC there, so in Umru village. The Umru BMC after forming, we uh, gave them awareness, and uh, uh, the BMC members after. Uh, the forming BMC, they got the legal powers, and along with the forest department, uh, these BMC members they stop the illegal poaching and trade of these Amul falcons. And um, for this reason, they got a special mention uh, and special award uh, from UNDP in 2018. Uh, on 13 December 2018, government of Meghalaya in consultation with Meghalaya Biodiversity Board issued notification regarding the declaration of designated, designated area under Umkon village, Umling block as Klaupur Sayam Kamiang Biodiversity Heritage Site. So this is the first biodiversity heritage site in Meghalaya and this clan has donated uh, this land uh, for the future generation and this uh, site will be totally protected for biodiversity for the future generations. Uh, the board uh, has published numerous publications, some of the major unlike Checklist of Flora of Meghalaya, Wild Orchids of Meghalaya, a pictorial guide. We also publish uh, numerous posters, more than 50 posters have been uh, published till now, and numerous brochures and pamphlets, and we distribute to the biodiversity management committees, uh, school, uh, colleges, and the general public for awareness and knowledge. Uh, this year, uh, this year also we uh, are supposed to release a book uh, on flowering plants of Meghalaya, a pictorial guide uh, the, from the authors Upadhyaya, K. L. Chaudhary, and uh, others. And this book is the first of its kind, uh, containing the detailed pictorial guide of uh, more than thousands. Uh, flowering plants of Meghalaya with their location and local names in Khasi and uh, Khasi and Garo language. This, uh, due to this pending, this is uh, the release is delayed. But after we release this book, um, will be a very good identification guide uh, for the flowering plants of Meghalaya uh, for the school, student, college, and and uh, researchers. Uh, we are also the board is also. Uh, completed a PBR mobile app along with uh, uh, NIC Shillong. The board has funded uh, for the preparation of this app. 
and uh, uh, through this app, it will be launched uh, shortly uh, as it is also delayed due to this pandemic. Uh, so after launching this, uh, uh, this app will allow crowdsourcing. Any villager, any student, any, uh, any local villager through crowdsourcing, any unique biodiversity they have in their village in any part of Meghalaya, they can upload a photo or any details they know about their, uh, that species, maybe flora or fauna in that app. And the board experts from our side will uh, verify uh, uh, that data. The, then we'll, we can put in the PBR of that village. And this way it will help in documenting the biodiversity of the state and um, legalizing the biodiversity um, of the state. And uh, it will improve uh, the knowledge of the local people. The board has also, the project is assistance of the board has completed 26 uh, biodiversity research project and the compilation is going on. The board has also translated uh, the Biological Diversity Act uh, in local Khasi and Garo languages. On the board behalf, I'd like to thank the state government of Meghalaya, uh, National Biodiversity Authority for their continued support and encouragement as we make efforts towards the implementation, implementation of the BD Act. I'd also like to thank uh, Department of Zoology, St. Anthony's College for organizing this uh, webinar and this competition. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Day. Thank you for your presentation, sir. And uh, before we move on to the main part of uh, the webinar, and that is we're going to hear from Dr. Uttam Saikya, I would like to mention again that this webinar is organized by the Department of Zoology, St. Anthony's College, in collaboration with the Meghalaya Biodiversity Board. And we would also like to acknowledge and welcome members of the Forest and Environment Department, uh, Government of Meghalaya. And uh, we would like to welcome Mr. Uh, Mr. H. Chaudhary, who is the additional principal chief conservator of forest wildlife, uh, Meghalaya. Uh, with that, we come to the main part, uh, the reason why we're all here, and that is to hear from Dr. Uttam Saikya. Uh, it is my privilege to introduce him. Dr. Uttam Saikya is currently working as a scientist, C in the Northeastern Regional Center of Zoolo Zoological Survey of India, Shillong. He was brought up in West Karbianglong district of Assam and completed his master's in PhD and PhD in zoology from uh, Gohati University. He started his research career working in the bat and rodent fauna in, Western, in the Western Himalayas. His primary research interests include small uh, mammalian systematics, especially the order of uh, Chiroptera. Apart from his numerous publications, Dr. Saikya also collaborates with bad researchers from the Hungarian National, uh, sorry, Natural History uh, Museum, uh, Budapest, and Natural History Museum of Geneva, Switzerland and also a few institutions from South Asian region. Dr. Saikya is also active in raising public awareness in biodiversity related issues through his writings in English and also in regional languages. Uh, recently, Dr. Saikya is known for the discovery he made along with his team of the species of bat found in Meghalaya, commonly known as the disc-footed bat. Uh, so thank you so much for being here with us. I, I hope you are well. And um, so I hand over the, the rest of the session to you. And I would like to remind the participants that there will be a Q&A Q session at the end. And therefore you can leave your, uh, you can leave your questions. Do we have a Q&A box? Um, you can leave your questions, I think, in the Q&A box or maybe in the chat, in the chat box. Yes, in the chat box. Uh, Dr. Uttam Saikya, welcome, sir. I hand over the rest of the session to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amanda, for this uh, very generous uh, introduction. And heartiest wishes on the occasion of International Day for Biological Diversity from Geological Survey of India, Shillong. So welcome, everyone, to this webinar. I take this opportunity to profusely thank the Department of Geology St. Anthony's College and the Meghalaya State Biodiversity Board for organizing this webinar and also giving me an opportunity to 
speak a few lines. Uh, honestly, although I have accepted this invitation instantly to speak, uh, I'm not actually qualified to speak to this August audience. And besides, I'm a very, very extremely poor uh, um, presenter. So hopefully, uh, I sincerely hope that for the next one hour or so, you'll bear with me with patience. The topic given to me to speak upon is new species discoveries from Meghalaya and importance of conservation. Of course, as a zoologist, I'll be dealing upon only faunal species or animal species described so far from Meghalaya. In all probability, I couldn't cover almost all the species described from Meghalaya so far, especially those from the uh, invertebrate taxa. This is because due to the corona-induced uh, lockdown, I couldn't access many of my resources in the office. So uh, in all prob probability, I have missed a few species from uh, that have been described from Meghalaya. So I beg your pardon for that. So coming to the business, I start with my presentation. First slide. So I put a very few unique points for our beloved state, that means Meghalaya. First is unique natural landscape. Meghalaya Plateau is nestled between the Brahmaputra Valley on the north and Bangladesh footplains in the south and forms a unique landscape. So Meghalaya is a plateau. It's originally a part of the peninsular Deccan Plateau, although there is no recent connectivity. So it's a form, it, form, it forms a very unique uh, landscape between the Brahmaputra Plains and the uh, flat plains of Bangladesh. Secondly, it's a small geographic area with a geographic area of only 22,430 square kilometers. The state forms about 0.7% of the total area of the country. It's not even 0.7%, 0.67% of the total area of the country. So that way it's a very tiny state. But that although we are tiny, we are a tiny state, that doesn't mean that we are poor in faunal resources, as we'll see in the next slides. Then thirdly, high elevation range. The elevation range of Meghalaya varies between 60 to 1960 meter ASL above sea level. So there is a huge variation of altitude. Then high forest cover. According to the state forest report 2019, the forest cover of the state is about 76%, which is quite considerable. Then geologic uniqueness. Geologic nature and high precipitation resulted in the formation of numerous cave systems. Now it's over 1400 cave systems are found in Meghalaya. Some are deepest in the Indian subcontinent. For example, Kram Liat Pra system, which is almost more than 31 kilometers long. Then lastly, it's a part of the Indo-Burma biodiversity hotspot. That means the state is rich in endemism, but highly threatened. In fact, Meghalaya is one, uh, this Indo-Burma biodiversity hotspot is one of the richest hotspots in the world, but also highly threatened uh, due, uh, by uh, highly threatened. Uh, uh, next. So I'll give a few stats. This is called funnel diversity of Meghalaya, the statistics. In this slide, I'm giving only the groups of animals, uh, invertebrate animals, and their species this, uh, discovered or described from, and not described, uh, known from, recorded from Meghalaya. So first group is called protozoa. It's a uh, unicellular eukaryotes. Maybe many of your, the participants might, might be knowing. There are 138 protozoan species recorded from Meghalaya so far. Then again, porifera or sponges. Sponges, normally you know that they are marine creatures, but there are a very few fresh species also, and one species is found in Meghalaya also. Then platyhelminthes, or commonly known as flatworms, there are 105 species recorded from Meghalaya. Then rotifera, or microscopic slit animals, there are 129 species recorded from Meghalaya. Then gastrotrica or microscopic worm-like animals, there are five species. Nematoda or roundworms, there are 89 species. 
Hecanthocephala or horny headed worms, there are 21 species. Anilida or segmented worms, which includes artworms, even leeches, they are 59 species. Then Arthropoda, which include all the insects, arachnids, that means spiders, crustaceans, that means those uh, crabs, crayfish, they are 8165 species. So this is the largest uh, phylum. Then Bryozoa or most animals, they are five species. Tardigrida, a microscopic water bears, they are 11 species. Then Mollusca, which includes snail, slugs, and bivalves, there are 196 species. So total 8859 species of invertebrates are recorded from Meghalaya so far. Then coming to the final diversity of vertebrates, the state, uh, there are 60, 166 species of uh, fishes, that means spices recorded from Meghalaya. Then again, 66 species of amphibia, that means frogs, toads, Sicilians. Then reptiles, that means snakes, lizards, skinks, tortoises and turtles, there are 106 species. Aves, that means birds, 712 species. The mammals, 163 species. So total vertebrates, 1213 species. So total number of species is almost crossing 10,000, 10,072. So what we are seeing that almost 10%, almost means it's more than 10% of the total faunal diversity of the India is found in Meghalaya. It's the number of species recorded from India is just crossing one lakh. So it's exactly 10% of the species within a geographic area of just 0.7% of the area of the country. So milestone works in faunal diversity studies in Meghalaya. Now I'm coming to the actual point, the species description from Meghalaya. The first species description from Meghalaya is that of John Edward Gray. He described one fish, this is called Balitora brusi. It's described from Chirakunji area. John E. Gray was a curator of the British Museum. Now it's a natural history museum. And he was responsible for developing the collections of British Museum as one of the finest in the world. Although he never visited India, he had collection, access to collections from various workers working in India and mostly Major General Thomas uh, Hardwicki. He has collected lots of specimens for him and also made a large number of paintings of the Indian animals and they are now all deposited in the British Museum. And consequently, Sir John McKellen described several fish species between 1839 to 1843. Sir John McKellen, he was a, actually he was a doctor. He was a doctor and he, said he was an accomplished a fish biologist also, ichthylogist. And based, he has described several species of uh, fishes from Cherakunji area during the period of 1839 to 1843. Then in 1851, Edward Blit recorded mammals, apes, and reptiles collected from Cherakunji area and described several species and subspecies of birds from that area. Edward Blit was the curator of the Asiatic Museum of, uh, Museum of the Asiatic Society of Bengal. He worked in India for a long 21 years. And during that period, he described a large number of birds, reptiles, uh, even few fishes also. Then subsequently, T.C. Zedon, in 1870, he's a Scottish surgeon, described several species of reptiles and amphibians from Khasi Hills. Actually, T.C. Zedon, he was also a doctor. He was a surgeon. But he was an accomplished, probably one of the most foremost ontologists in the world. There are so many species of birds named after him, like Jardins, Baja, Jardins, uh, uh, Cursor, etc. Then British geologist, Lieutenant Colonel Henry Godwin Austin published a series of reports between 1870 to 1876 on the avifauna of Khasi and Garo Hills, including the description of a few bird species. Lieutenant Colonel Henry Godwin Austin, we know him as the second highest peak in the world. We call it K2 is named after him, Mount Gordon Austin. He was an accomplished geologist and also a surveyor, but he, he, he was equally interested in bird. So he was an ontologist also. And the last milestone work uh, in the field of geology of Meghalaya was conducted in 1922, when biospeleological, biospeleological means uh, exploration of cave animals. 
Explorations of Sizu Cave in South Garo Hills was conducted by Stan Dick and, and B. Chopra of Geological Survey of India, Kolkata. In 1922, and this exploration has led to the description of several new species of uh, fishes, crustaceans, arachnids, and insects. And till this date, Sizu Cave remains the best explored biologically explored uh, cave in the uh, in India in the country. So the saga of species discovery from Meghalaya. So I have divided this um, in chronological order. First, I have described uh, I, mean, I have listed all the species described in the 19th century. Then during the first half of 20th century, that means 1901 to 1950. Then during post independence period, that means 1952. Uh, till present. As I said earlier, the fish, the first species description from, from Meghalaya was a fish. It's a small fish called Balitora brusai. This is the this was described from Chenakunji. Then thereafter, in 1839, another species called Gara Nasuta. It was described from Khasi Hills. Then again in 1842, Amblyceps laticeps. It's again from Khasi Hills. In 1842, another species called Glyptothorax striatus, it's also from Khasi Hills. 1842, another species of fish called Pseudo chenensis scutuleta, this is from, also from Khasi Hills. Then 1842, Olira longicapota, this is also from Khasi Hills. 1843, Gara lisorincas, this is also from Khasi Hills. In those days, those localities, type localities are locality from where a species has been described. So during that time, those localities were very vague. In our, uh, today we are having GPS, so we give like lat, long, altitude, everything. But in those days, they were like Khasi Hills, maybe from Assam, and there are localities like, even from uh, localities like Himalayas type localities. It's as vague as that. So next, coming to the amphibious species, that means uh, frogs and toads, described from Meghalaya during the 19th century. The first amphibia described from Meghalaya is Genophrys monticula, which was described in the year 1864 from Khasi Hills. Then subsequently in 1870, Hyla anakens was described from Khasi Hills. 1871, Limnonectis khasianus was described from Khasi Hills. Then in 1876, Amolops formosus was described from Khasi Hills. Then 1882, another species called Clinotarsus alticola, it was described from our very own Shillong. Then 1882, another species called Philotus dubius was described from Cassils. So six species of amphibia were described during that period. Then reptile species described from Meghalaya during 19th century. Only two species of reptiles were described from that period, and those included Cirtotectylus cassians, is commonly known as Khasi Hills Banto gecko. It was described by Jardon in 1870. Again, Jardon described another species of snake from Khasi Hills, known as Stolistia khasiensis, or Khasi art snake. Those pictures I'll show later on. Then, bird species discoveries from Meghalaya during 19th century. There are lots of birds described from Meghalaya during this period, around seven species or some species. The first one is 1851, called Indian chat, because normally for birds, we Call it by the common name. So Indian chat was described from Cherakunji. The secondly, in 1851, spot-breasted laughing trust was described from Cherakunji. 1851, black-footed parrot bill was described from Cherakunji. Then 1854, Duane breasted rain wobbler it was described from Khasi Hills. 1876, black-footed prinia it was described from Khasi Hills. 1876, rusty-fronted barwin. It was described from Khasi Hills. And in 1878, another species called gray sided laughing trust, it was described from Shillong. Then the mammal species described from Meghalaya during 19th century. The first species is a small rodent called Micromys minutus on Eurasian harvest mouse. It was described from Cherakunji area by Bleat. Then again, Bleach described another species called Chiropodomys gyroides or pencil tail tree mouse. It's a small mouse with a long, long tail. It's very, uh, uh, very much similar to that uh, Banderuria, long tail tree mouse. It was described from Cherakunji. Then in 1871, 
another species of bat called thick eared bat called Ithacicus acutis, scientific name. It is also described from Khasi Hills. So in pictures, uh, these are few of the uh, species of fishes described from Meghalaya during the 19th century. This is the first species of fish described, I mean, first, first species of any animal described from Meghalaya. This is a Balitora brucei. The second one is Amblyceps laticeps. This is a catfish. And third one is also a Glyptoprax stritus. It's also a catfish described from Meghalaya. Then these are few of the new amphibian species described from Meghalaya during the 19th century. This is Hyla anectens. This is from Khasi Hills and Clinthorsus altogether. This is described from Shillong. And these are two of the new reptile species described from Meghalaya during the 19th century. First one is Pseudotokaius khasiensis. It's a small gecko, also known as Khasi Hills bantoed gecko. And second one is called as snake called Stolischia khasiensis. You might be wondering why I'm showing this uh, preserved specimen picture. Because this Stolischia khasiensis is one of the uh, uh, rarest snake in the world. It's uh, in this uh, genus Stolischia has got only two, uh, two species. One is found in Borneo and one is found in Khasi Hills in Assam. Because this snake is known from only three specimens throughout the world. One is from Khasi, Khasi Hills and two from Assam. And this specimen is in Geological Survey of India, taken by my friend. And after this description, first description in 1870, nobody has seen this snake ever after. Then new bird species described from Meghalaya in 19th century. First is the Indian chat, again described from Sora, Charapunji area. Spot breasted laughing first, Khasi Hills, one a breasted rain warbler. This is also from Khasi Hills. Then mammal species described from Meghalaya 19th century. Although I have given it like Ipteasica CF Pacutis, it's certainly not probably the Pacutis because this is the uh, species uh, which was described from Khasi Hills long time back in 1870, 71, but I'm unable to get this species till now. So most probably, so I am just giving one representative photo. This is Ipteasica most probably Pacutis, but not the Pacipas or Khasi Hills uh, thick eared bat. And this is a, uh, a rodent called Chiropodomus glyroids, pencil tailed uh, mouse. This is also described from uh, Cassils. Then coming to the 20th century, that means the period of 1901 to 1950, new species of fish described from Megalea. During that period, only one species of fish called 1925, Aborictis garoensis was described by Hora in 1925 from Tula area of Garo Hills. This Hora, Sundarlal Hora was former director of Geological Survey of India, and he is known for his famous Sakura hypothesis. Then new species of amphibia described from Meghalaya during the period of 1905 to 1950. The first one is Genophrys major. It was described from Khasi Hills. Then in 1991, Bollinger described Bufo, it's campy. It's from Tura, but known only from the type. There is a uh, type specimen, means, uh, the, the, those specimens based on which we describe a new species. So this species is known only from the type specimens. So it's a very rare species. In, then in 1919, another species called Philotas garo was described from Tura. Then in 1990, again, Philotas campia was described from Tura. This is also known by only the type specimen. Then in 1927, Another species called Recophorus bipunctatus was described from Khasi Hills. So there are only five specimens, uh, uh, five species of amphibia described from Meghalaya during that period. And there are three species of reptiles described from, 19, uh, from Meghalaya during 1900 to 1950. Those were Harpetorias genura, it was described from Sora, it's a harmless um, colubrid snake. Then one lizard called Tachydromus khasiensis from Khasi Hills. Then another beautiful snake called Primerosaurus popiorum or Pope speed viper, it was described from Khasi Hills by Smith, Malcolm Smith in 1937. Besides those uh, vertebrate species, there are numerous or uh, many miscellaneous species discoveries, which are mostly invertebrates that I'm giving. This is this Meladil Thelfusa Felsi digitis, it's a crab. Then Barmoniscus campi, Described from Mosmoy cave, it's an isopod or wood lice. Then Cuberus cavernicus, this is not clear type locality. 
This is also described from, from a cave of Meghalaya. Then Utah kinase, uh, kinesians breviforms. So Lakadon cave from uh, described from Lakadon cave. So orthopera, that means cricket. Then another species, it's also orthopera described from Mosmai cave. Then Typhlobleta, Sika, Rupnat cave. It's a uh, uh, what do you call cockroach. Then another orthopera species, type locality not clear. Then Heteropoda robust, uh, robusta, this is an arachnid species, that means spider. Then Campiola longipes species, another cricket from Suzuki. Macrobicium cavernicola, this is a shrimp species described from Suzuki. As I had told uh, earlier, there are many species described from during the Sizu explorations. So these are few of the species. Opius cavernicola, Suzuki, gastropoda, that means it's a mollusk. Then Philocidio bocali, it's an isopod. Again, wood lice from Sizu cave. Then Tini entricola, it's a guanomoth from Sizu cave. Then Tini pyrosoma, it's a guanomoth from Sizu cave. And Trachy, Trachy was mimus, it's a millipede from Sizu cave. So total 15 species of uh, invertebrates were described during that period from Megalaya. So again, in picture, I am showing this few and even species described from Megala during 1901 to 1905. First is this Genophilus major, again described from Khasi Hills, and Repophorus bipanctatus, described from Khasi Hills. It's a beautiful uh, uh, frog, commonly found in, in and around Silang also. Then these are the three new species of uh, uh, reptiles described from Megalaya during that period. First one is Hypatorius genera from Cherapunji area. Then this is a lizard from called the Kaitramas Khasiensis. This is uh, also found, uh, can be seen in Nongkailam also. And this is the beautiful snake called Trimerosaurus popiorum, also known as Poof Speed Viper, described by Malcolm Smith in 1937 from Khasiensis. So these are some of the arthropod species, I mean, uh, in, uh, not arthropod, uh, yes, arthropod species, means invertebrate species described from Megalaya. First one is Campiola longipes. This is a typical cave dwelling species. Uh, it's not very clear, but probably you have seen the long antenna because they live inside a cave. So they, their sensory mechanism needs to be very acute. So they, they have got highly developed antenna so that in the dark they can uh, easily uh, move. Then second one is Macrobicium cavernicola. This is also described from Sizu game. As you have seen, this is a stream and this is completely transparent, translucent. That means it's a adapted to cave and it's a cavernicola. And third one is Typhlo beta sica. This is a this is actually cockroach without eye. This was described from a cave called Rupnath Cave in Jente Hills long time back in 1924. But this is found also in Sizu Cave. So this is a cockroach without eyes. This is also adapted for cave environment in the dark. So coming to the post-independence period. So a new species of fishes described from Megala during the post-independence period, that is 1950 till present. The first species described from Meghalaya uh, during that period is Pillaya Indica Yazdani. He was, was a ex genetic scientist from Sumer Stream in East Khasi Hills. Then in 1975, Petia Shelinius from Lake Umium. Then 1977, Garo Khazuria, Talwar Atoll, Rangrangri in East Garo Hills. Then in 1981, uh, Physos Istura Ilongeta is also from Lake Umium. Then 1981, Sistura reticulophysiata, it's also from Lake Umium. 1987, Sistura sudiensis, it's from Sizu Cave by Menon. No, I missed uh, one species in 1985, sorry for that. In 2007, another species called Denio gentensis was described by Sen, our own scientist from Genesai, from Rangriang uh, in West Gentia Hills. Then in 2007, Another species called Sistura popolifera, it's a cave dwelling species from described from Sinurang Pamyang uh, cave system. Then in 2013, one species called Dario Kazal was described from Umlong in Jantia Hills. In 2016, Chana Pardelis described from Longstone in West Khasi Hills. 2017, one species of uh, Sistura Larkatensis was described by Chaudhary Atal. They actually, they are from Goa University and one of uh, our uh, professor in Saint, uh, not uh, Ledigan College, 
uh, so Dr. Mokim is also involved in this project. So they together described this species from Cram Kung in Giant Hills, Sistura Larkatensis. Then in 2018, Monopteras Rongso from Nongtrai village in Soda. Then Chana Lipor, Umraling uh, River in River District. Then Sistura uh, Sinkai, again, same group, Chaudhuri Atal, including Dr. Mukim. Then this is from a stream in West Khasi Hills. Then in 2020, Chana Aristoni from Puriyam in East Khasi Hills. And in 2020, that most recent one is Chana Brahmachari from Simsang River in South Garwil. So in total, 16 species of fishes were described during that period. Then coming to the amphibious species described from Megalaya during post-independence period. First species is Bufoids megalinus from Moglam in Sora. It was described from by our scientist Yasdani and Chandra in 1971. Then again in 1973, this is a, a, a frog called Raupestis shilongensis was described from our very near to our office from Malgi Forest in Shilong. This is a very small frog. Uh, I'll show you the picture later on, but it's a means uh, listed as critically endangered because it's endemic to Shilong and nearby areas. Then in 1977, another species called Odorana moflangensis was described from Moflang, separate group by our scientists Pillai and Askachandra. In 1999 and 1990, one frog called Limnonectis molin was described from Khasi Hills. Then again, 1999, Ithaifis garoensis. It was a, uh, what do you call it? Sicilian. It's a Sicilian. It's a, like, uh, what do you call it? It's a, uh, although it's an amphibia, it looks like a uh, snake. Ichthyphus garoensis, it was described from garoels by Pillai and Rabbi Chandran. And 2009, Ichthyphus alfredi by Matthew and San. These are our own people from North Korea Biosphere Reserve. 2009, Ichthyphus daribokensis, Matthew and San from North Korea Biosphere Reserve. Then Ichthyphus nocrecensis from North Korea. Then another species of uh, frog, Leptobrecula uh, cassinorum. Kasiura, which was described by Dr. Indranil Das from University of Sarawak in Malaysia and his groups from offline, separate group. In 2010, another species called Lactobrachella nocrecensis was described by our uh, Matthew and Sen from Nocrec Biosphere Reserve. Then in 2011, one frog called Genophrys megacephala was described by Stephen Mahoney and his uh, co workers from Revoy District. Then in 2012, one species, Minervaria sangupta, was described by Kukas and Masuti Matsuai from Moflang sacred group. There are so many species of uh, frogs described from Moflang reserve uh, sacred group. Then in 2013, Chikila Gaidumani was described by Mahaniatol from Tura, Genophrys Oropedion from Malki Forest in Shilong. In 2018, Genophrys Plenipa from Moflang sacred group. And the recent one is 2018, Genophrys Oreocrypta from Tura. And during this post-independence period, only two species of reptiles have been described so far. That's it. The first one is Spanomophus. It's a skink called Spanomophus. Eval Prevetus. It was described again from Mofla, separate group by Dr. Ray Atom. Dr. Ray is now with a nicer in Vonesher. And 2018, uh, this is a gecko called Sritotepelas gentensis. It was described from Tirsai Falls near Jowai, so it was named after Jainte people, Jaintensis, by Ishan Agraal at all. They are from ISC, Bangalore. So there is no snake described from during this period. And new species of birds from Meghalaya during the post independence period. There are only two species. The first one is Rufus Chin Laughing Truss. This was described from Pinursula area of East Castles by Coels. It's a German ontologist. And same author described one another species called chestnut crown bush wobbler, 1954 from Fulbury in West Garo Hills. Then post-independence period, only two species of mammals were described from Megalaya. That two are bats. They are known as uh, they are called uh, tubeless bats. One is Murina pluvialis by Rudy et al. from the Natural System Museum of Geneva and his co-workers. Rainforest, commonly known as rainforest tube nose bats. It was described from Lightkin village in is Hills. And in the same year, in the same paper, another species called Murina gentiana was described from Shea area of uh, is, uh, gentiles, commonly known as gentia tube-nosed bats. So besides those vertebrate species, 
they are miscellaneous invertebrate species discoveries from Meghalaya. So I am giving those. One Decapoda, a Diplopoda or Millipet was discovered, Asamodesmus, from that locality is not very clear, but Himalayas of Assam and in bracket, it's probably Khasis. So we are not sure what, what is the type locality, but it's known as Himalayas of Assam. Then another species of spider was described from Jaintia Hills called Heteropoda fishery in 2005. Then in 2014, one orthoptera, cricket species, uh, Liconfugia umsningensis was described by right? uh, Hazong et al. Dr. Professor Hazong is a, with Northeastern Hills University, he's a professor there. So he's described that species of orthoptera from Umsning area. So it's named after Umsning, umsningensis. Then in 2017, Teratomon spadium, it's a typical cave dwelling, that means the cavernicum. Typical cave building cave described from Kram Kung by Absar Atoll from Kram Kram uh, Cave Kung in Gentiles. In 2020, actually it's a new genus Krishnamum. It was described from a cave limb uh, from a collection made by me from limb, uh, cave limput. It's a crab. It was described a new genus of crab from uh, from the world. It was described by Pati Atoll. Uh, he, he's our colleague at the Western Regional Station in Pune. Then most recently in 2021, in February or March, three species of hemiptera, that means cicada were described by Sarkar et al, including one scientist from Jerusalem. They are called Mata species, Mata Rafordi, Mata Megalena, Mata Leonina, that kind of three species of uh, cicada were described by these people from Sora and Balfakan National Park. And besides this, during the period 2014 to 17, 14 new species of Feeder mites. Feeder mites are their parasitic mites, small mites, microscopic mites found in the feathers of the birds. They were described from Constantin School at all. They are Romanian scientists and they are having their local collaboration with uh, Ledigan College. So they have described 14 species of feather mites from Megalaya. So 22 species of invertebrates were discovered during that period. So again, these are the pictures. Sistura sigensis from Sizu Cave, Petia. Silenius from uh, Khasi Hills, Sistura populifera is a cave building uh, again, uh, species from, uh, from a cave in uh, uh, Meghalaya. Then Pilla in Indica, again from Khasi Hills. So these are the amphibian species described during the uh, post independence period. First one is the Odorana mofflaensis from Mofla, Mofla uh, secret growth. And this is the small frog I was talking about, Rautuspis shilongensis, which is found only in and around Shilong. It's a critically endangered species. This is a male one calling, which is uh, means uh, vocal sac. He's calling, which is described from uh, Malki forest. And third one, again, Minervaria sanguttai, it's described from Moflang uh, sacred group by Prukastha. And third one, uh, fourth one is the Janophrys or Apidion, again, described from Khasi Hills. Then these are the two species of reptiles described from Megalaya post during post independence period. First one is the Cirtodactylus gentensis. It's a very recent discovery in 2018 only by Adol et And second one is Phenomorphus apple prevetus. Dr. et is described from gentensis near Joai. And these are the two species of birds described during post independence period. First is the Rufus chin laughing trust. This is a very common in and around Shillong. And second one is the chestnut crown bush warbler. And regarding the mammal species, as I had told earlier, there are only two bat species described during the post-independence period. First one is the Giantia hill tube nose bat called Murina giantiana. And the second one is Murina pluvialis or rainforest tube nose bat, both described by Rudy et al. And these are some pictures of the invertebrate species during described during post-independence period. The first one is the Teratomon spadium, the typical cave dwelling spider, uh, not spider, uh, crab, crustacean. Then second one is the new genus, Krishnamon, which are described from uh, uh, crab limput by Patti et al. in 2020. And these are the three species of uh, cicada described very recently in 2021, Mata Megalena, Mata Rafordi, and Mata Leonia. So if we look at the trend of species discovery in Meghalaya, 
we'll see that there are 25 species of Megalea uh, fishes in the spectrum uh, Megalea in total. Then there are 27 species of amphibia in the spectrum Megalea, seven species of reptiles, nine species of amphibians, five species of uh, uh, apes, five species of ma uh, mammalia, and 37 species of invertebrate breeds. So group-wise percentage, so Pisces constitute about 23% of the total species of uh, the striped species. Then amphibia, 25% uh, percent highest. Then reptilia, 6%. Apes, 8%. Mammals, 5%. And invertebrate total, they constitute 33% of the total the striped species. And if we see it like um, uh, during this uh, 19th century, then post-independence, uh, pre-independence and post-independence period. There are 26 species of, um, uh, in total, uh, of animals described from Megala during 18, uh, 1830. That means the first uh, description of the species from Megala till 1900. Seven species of fish, six, six species of amphibia, two species of reptiles, seven apes, three uh, mammals. Then uh, during this period, 1901 to 1950, 24 species are described, one species of uh, fish, five species of amphibia, three reptiles, and 15 species of invertebrates. And during the period 1950 to present, most of the species are described from Megalea. There are 60 species, including 60 species, 16 species of fish, 16 amphibia, two reptiles, two apes, two mammals, and 22 invertebrates. So coming to the last part, conservation. Although I'm not a conservationist and I am least qualified to talk about conservation. I have given a few points just briefly. Why to protect? The first point is there, if you Google, you'll see lots of means there are lots of reasons, there are lots of points why we need to protect the art species or arts biodiversity. I'm just giving a few. Species conservation is a way of protecting life on art to ensure smooth functioning of the natural system. Because all the species on Earth, be it endangered, critical, or whatever it may be, very common, they are interwined in a very intricate way. So if we disturb the system, the whole natural system will function erratically. So in order to, uh, order to function this natural system smoothly, we need to protect every species possible. Then secondly, every species is a product of thousands of years of evolution in history. So it's a priceless heritage. Of course, species cannot evolve in one, two years or 10 years, 100 years. It takes thousands of millions of years to for evolution of, of a single species. So they are a priceless heritage of our history, or this is a priceless legacy. So because of that only, we need to protect this species. Then coming to Megalea, many of the species are endemic to Megalea. As I have said, or they are threatened. For example, the Silong bush, bush frog, camps bush, bush frog, Rainforest tube not nose bats. These are the species, these are not the uh, complete list, but there are so many species which are found only in Megalia. They are endemic to Megalia. So if we do not protect them, they might go, they might well go extinct in the near future. Then last point is this is a proverb from the Native Americans. They say we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. This is self-explanatory. And this is the probably the most important reason for which we should protect our species of biodiversity. Then conservation in action. I'm giving the list of uh, PAs, means the protected areas from Megalea. We have two national parks, Balfakram and Nokrek uh, 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 National Park. Then we have four wildlife sanctuaries. And we, we also have 65 community reserves. It's a very unique system in Megalea where we have community reserves which are legally uh, protected. And these 65, 4, 69, 71 uh, protected areas, they constitute about 2.04% of the total geographic area of the state. Although this uh, figure is a little bit low compared to some other states in Northeast India, they are in, uh, in the range of 4 to 5%. So there is a scope of increasing the number also. Besides, there are about 125 sacred groups, which although lack any legal status, but are instrumental in protecting the biodiversity of the state. We, we are having so many like Moflong uh, sacred group, uh, which are being protected by the local people. They do not have any legal status uh, like uh, wildlife sanctuary or community reserve, but they are protected by the local people. So by the way of this sacred groups also, 
we are protecting a large number of our biodiversity because as you have seen already a large number of species have been described from mothlung reserve forest including frogs and uh, lizards so what are the key takeaways from this uh, simple presentation meghalaya is extremely rich in faunal wealth and has kept the taxonomies busy for a long long time however field explorations and taxonomy descriptions has not caught the fancies of many researchers especially local researchers this is uh, a really sad story of the uh, sad part of the story because as you have seen most of the descriptions are made by most of the descriptions of animals or the new discoveries were made by people from outside the state so we have resources but we are not taking it up so i take this opportunity to ask our uh, budding researchers to take up taxonomy as a career option and we are here to help you if uh, there is any uh, need then second uh, thirdly like many parts of the world the faunal diversity is threatened by human activities and there is urgent need to assess this diversity before it is lost so a renewed push towards this end is critical for effective conservation of the biodiversity of the state so i would like to acknowledge uh, my friends and colleagues especially dr abhijit das from wellam institute of india dehradun my colleagues in geological survey of india dr demos kinniam ab mitte and bhaskar sakia all scientists from uh, in jerusalem and dr samrat sangupta he is from dr college assam and various online resources for providing me information photograph and many helps so in case you need my email id also i am giving my email id it's suptam jerusalem gmail.com mobile 8731910286 in fact uh, uh, i'd like to uh, see that in case any students who are doing their um, i mean uh, msc or post graduation and they they are thinking of taking up uh, funnel research in future we are willing to help so they can come here and uh, if means they uh, if means they are interested they can come they can contact us contact us at this geological survey in india and we'll be more than happy to mentor them thank you so much thank you so much uh, dr uttam saikia thank you so much welcome sorry thank you so much sir for that very exhaustive and very um, el elaborate presentation i'm sure our participants here um, will benefit tremendously from that uh, we have members of our uh, we have attendees who are mostly students uh college students and uh, school students so we encourage you to please ask questions if you have any uh please post your questions in the chat box while we wait for the link to the feedback form uh as you can see we're also live on youtube uh on the t7 news channel so anybody who has questions there you can post your questions on the live uh, on the live chat yes so we are posting the the link to the feedback form but if you have any questions please go ahead and ask them all right so uh, while we wait for questions from our attendees if they have any uh, i watched one of your interviews on youtube and of course this is going to be a very um, this is going to sound simplistic but for the benefit maybe of our of our school uh, students and our college students uh, uh, i think you're better known now for your association uh, with the you know the discovery of the disc footed bat and you talked of the ecological importance of of bats so i i wonder if you can share the same here sir um so uttam saikya can you hear me sir yes yes ma'am so did you hear my question uh uh yes yes ma'am yes okay we'll get to that sir uh, we'll get to that but i think the participants are now are now asking questions so yes. we have one from manish sonwal uh, who says that each and every day scientists do research in different places and try to find out new species is that a statement or a question uh, mr manish sonwal 
Okay, while we wait for that clarification, maybe Anjana Sinha, uh, uh, she says, Sir, after completing MSc, can I be a wildlife worker and how, and how can I get in touch with you? Uh, see, of course you can be, a, provided you have the means, uh, passion for that, because uh, this field of wildlife biology, not only wildlife biology, means uh, taxonomy is uh, uh, not very rewarding like uh, uh, any other subjects of uh, biology or geology, so people hardly opt for that. But if you have that uh, passions and if you had, it, um, I mean, what you call uh, that uh, 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 rigor means, uh, if you had the capacity to work hard in the field, then certainly you can become a, a very good taxonomist and a, few, a very good field biologist, of course. And you can, as I have given my phone number and email, you can come to the office also, you can contact us directly and we'll try to guide you. Uh, All right. Uh, thank you, sir. We have one more from Abhijit Purkhaya, sir. Uh, sir, I think you can you can see uh, you can see the questions there in the chat box. Yes, yes. I am not going to try and attempt to pronounce some of these words. Uh, he says, "I'm I'm surprised to see groups such as gastrotrichia, uh, bryozoan, and sponges, which are um, majorly marine in nature. I just want to know how yes. are the species from Megalia different from the marine species." Uh, uh, only one, uh, one species of sponge is uh, reported from Megalea. That is uh, uh, that uh, uh, name I forgot actually, but uh, I can give you the name. Only one species uh, from this from these fossils, that, that is for sure. And uh, these other, what I have given, it's a, a compilation of various works. I am not working with any of these groups. I am working only on best. So certainly I am disqualified to answer this question, but if you come to, to our office, then we can probably discuss about this, uh, how they are different from marine species. Because I have seen a lot of, uh, a number of uh, uh, freshwater sponges, even when I was posted in Himachal produce. So uh, I haven't seen that species from Megalaya, but it is reported from Megalaya. Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question from Arundeep Singha. Will it be possible for the Zoological Survey of India to conduct field trips to some sites or look around for these endemic frogs, birds in Shillong and around Meghalaya itself? No, in fact, we are already only uh, working on these groups. So we have scientists working on these groups. Uh, one scientist called Bhaskar Saikya, he's working on amphibians in our station. So very well, you can come and talk to him, you can meet him. And whenever he goes and whenever I mean, so he goes to the field, uh, he can be with, in touch with you and you can also be in touch with him. So it's very possible. Yes, yes, we will welcome that. All right. Uh, another one from, uh, I think this is Dr. Daman Bhalingdor. Uh, with the onset of molecular taxonomy, do you expect some changes in the old morphological records? Uh, it's an interesting question to answer. Uh, yes, very much, because taxonomy is not, not uh, now a boring subject like um, only based on morphological uh, characters. Now it's completely integrated taxonomy based on molecular characters, even behavioral uh, characters. For, uh, in fact, uh, for my group in BATS, we do some work on ecolocation analysis, call analysis. So yes, it's, it's, a, it's a now based on molecular uh, data, we are revising many, many, many old records and coming up with new species, new and genus, even, even new families. So yes, very much with uh, molecular, with the advent of molecular techniques, we are revising um, taxonomies, also getting a, a fresh, I mean, impetus and lots of things are changing. Yes. Okay, all right, thank you, sir. Uh, Ab Ab Abigail Nongrum asks, how do you discover new fauna and how do you decide to name them? It's a very big question to answer probably. It's uh, only possible to describe, I means uh, give just exact details within the period, because we are working on certain groups. For example, I work on uh, bats. So whenever, I, because I have like 15 years of field uh, experience now. So whenever I see one a bat, I know whether to which group means to which genus at least it belongs. If this is something, it looks interesting to me, then I come to the uh, laboratory, then do a thorough analysis of the skeletal characters, bone characters, dental characters. Then also I'm doing a little bit of uh, with collaboration with my friends, a little bit of genetics also. So based on that, I can tell what is new or what is not. So it takes lots of experience to, uh, to tell whether it's a new species or a new interesting thing. It doesn't come automatically within a very short period of time. That will come only after years of experience. All right, okay. Abigail, I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. 
Uh, another one from Kamalji Jyoti Chakravarti. During the pandemic situation, number of bats were burned for being the vector of coronavirus. However, only horseshoe bats uh, perhaps are the potent vectors of coronavirus infecting humans. Therefore, I would like to know if steps have been taken by the um, Zoological Survey of India to prevent such inhumane activities and instill awareness in the minds of the people. Yeah, good question. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm giving some clarifications regarding this. Um, bats are associated with so many myths. And one of the myths is that bats, are harbor, uh, bats harbor lots of virus which infect humans. But this is actually not true. Because initially there was a rumor that uh, this coronavirus came from horseshoe bats, Chinese horseshoe bat called Rhinolophus sinicus, which we found here in Meghalaya also. But Nobody has ever come up with substantial or uh, concrete evidence that this has come from Chinese horseshoe bat. These are all still being debated. So I will say that bats are not responsible for the as a, as a source of this coronavirus. Yes, bats do harbor lots of viruses, not only coronavirus, but many of these viruses are harmless. And this intraspecific jump, that means from one species to another species jump of virus is not a very common phenomenon. It's, it's a very um, it's a complex phenomenon. It just cannot jump from, um, uh, from a bat to a human being. So yes, under this, uh, because people are normally scared about bats uh, because of many negative, uh, 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 what you call uh, uh, negative uh, uh, news about bats and all. So they are being persecuted in many places that I have heard. Even last month only, I one of my friends, he was in Chennai, he was posted in Chennai, he called me up, Dada, I have seen some um, flying fox flying around, but uh, as soon as they see this flying fox, those people, they, um, though they are, means uh, they are outside, they, are, they came inside, they are running came inside, so they are so scared. So actually bats are not that dangerous, because uh, take it from me, I have been working with bats for 15 years, and uh, except for rabies, anti-rabies injection, I am not taking anything, any, any, any precaution as such, but I'm still as healthy as you. So they are really harmless animals and they are having so many ecological uh, uh, significance. I and mean, their ecological is so important, uh, like pollinators, they are controlling pests and so on. And there are a few articles of, uh, of me, you can Google online regarding the ecological importance of that. So you can go through it. So, and regarding this uh, uh, steps taken by uh, genocide to prevent such human, uh, inhuman activities, this is not our domain, actually. This is not our mandate. This will be done by the forest authorities. So uh, we try to, of course, educate people whenever we get a chance, like this forum, that bats are not, bats are not very dangerous animals, and they should be, uh, uh, shouldn't be even killed or persecuted. So no, we are not doing that. All right. Uh, thank you, sir. I think Manish Sonwal, uh, Manish really wants to know if scientists research each and every day to try and find out new species? Mm, no, no, that is not our goal actually. F finding a new species is already accident. So we are working to document the mandate of the Zoological Survey of India, like us, people, his mandate is to document the fauna diversity of the, uh, of the Northeastern India for us, for our center. We document uh, the fauna diversity in the North, in the North Indian states of Meghalaya, or, uh, except for six states. So during that course of fieldwork, of course, we come across new things, new species, new records, maybe interesting things. That's so, that's, so we are not working only for uh, documenting for new species. It's a part of the job, but it's not the whole thing. Yes. All right. Well, I think we have time for only one or, or two more questions. I'm so sorry. There are a couple. There are a couple more, maybe uh, the faculty of uh, zoology department can also try and type in, you know, to answer some of these questions in the chat box. Um, uh, uh, Pinshangan Karbani asks, in discovering a new species, is it just the morphology and anatomy uh, that is looked upon or any other factors? As I told earlier, earlier, uh, maybe 30 years, 50 years back, description of new species is solely based on morphology and anatomy but it's not now uh, the same case because we take uh, a lot of evidences, including genetic evidence, molecular evidence, even ecological evidence, behavioral evidences to supplement this uh, morphological uh, or anatomical features. Of course, morphology still holds the ground. It's the basic characters, but based on, uh, they are supplemented by molecular, uh, molecular uh, data and uh, maybe behavioral data and ecological data, et cetera. So not solely based on uh, morphology. Okay, uh, one last question from Klan Thing Dongrum. Do cli does climate change affect the species 
its existence as well as its extinction? Um, see, I am I'm not working on climate change and the general perception is that, of course, it's affecting. Of course, there is a consensus among the scientific community that, of course, climate change is affecting uh, species existence because because of climate change we are uh, seeing erratic I mean, so erratic uh, behavioral patterns like uh, flood flood then even severe uh, monsoon sometimes it's drought so obviously these uh, environmental changes are affecting the existence of the species but uh, that is a big subject and uh, people are working on that certainly it's working yeah yeah yes first thing all right um i i think we will we will wrap it up thank you so much to everybody who participated and uh, thank you so much once again, Dr. Dr. Saikya, sir. Thank you for your time mm -hmm. you. and um, have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. I will now invite uh, Ma'am uh, Dia Parsantio, Faculty Zoology Department uh, for the vote of science. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, ma'am, go ahead. Honorable dignitaries, distinguished guests, respected principal, beloved rector, and dear participants. On behalf of the Department of Zoology, St. Anthony's College, Shillong, I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks for the occasion. Let me first start by giving glory to Almighty God for making today's webinar a resounding success. As William Arthur Ward rightly said, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. Today, I take the opportunity to express my deepest sense of gratitude and appreciation to all those who made this event a success. To begin, I would like to thank our guest speaker, Dr. Uttam Saikya, Scientist C, Northeastern Regional Center, Zoological Survey of India, Shillong, who has spared his valuable time to grace this webinar with an extremely relevant address on new species and Meghalaya and the importance of conservation. I believe all the participants have immensely benefited from it. Special mention may, be, uh, may perhaps be made that uh, Dr. Saikya took an extraordinary effort to get this webinar uninterrupted by getting permission from the DC to go to his office for better internet connectivity. Once again, thank you so much, sir. I would also like to thank Dr. Sankha Dipta De, scientist, Meghalaya Biodiversity Board, for his address on International Day for Biological Diversity and the works of my Meghalaya Biodiversity Board. I would also like to extend my gratitude to all our guest panelists, uh, Sri N. Luikam, IFS Conservator of Forest, and come member secretary, Meghalaya Biodiversity Board, Sri H. C. Chaudhary, IFS, Additional Principal Chief Conservator of Forest and Chief Wildlife Warden, Department of Forest and Environment, Government of Meghalaya, Srimati H. Lato, MFS, Divisional Forest Officer, come District Nodal Officer, Jaintia Hills District. We also have panelists from the college, uh, Father Joby Joseph, Father Gervasius Nongse, and also our, my colleagues from the uh, college. A big thank you to all of you for sparing your time and for gracing this webinar with your presence. This webinar is being held with the initiative and support extended by the Meghalaya Biodiversity Board, Government of Meghalaya, Shillong. I would therefore like to express my sincere thanks to all the officials of the Meghalaya Biodiversity Board. A special thanks goes to Ms. Stevia V. Karmalki, PA cum Administrative Assistant, Meghalaya Biodiversity Board, who has put in a lot of effort in coordinating this webinar with the Department of Zoology of our college. I would also like to express my heartfelt thanks to Reverend Dr. Brother Dr. Albert Dakar, Principal, St. Anthony's College, under whose dynamic leadership the department has been able to successfully host this webinar. Due to the demise of his mother earlier this week, brother could not be physically present for this webinar. However, we would like to place on record our deep gratitude for all the guidance and support that he has extended. A big thank you goes to Reverend Father Joby Joseph, Rector, St. Anthony's College, who has always been a source of inspiration to our college. Thank you, Father, for blessing this webinar with your prayer. I would also like to extend my sincere thanks to my colleague, Dr. B. Masar, Department of Zoology, for giving a very warm welcome address to everyone participating in the webinar. This webinar would not have been uh, widely publicized, but for the strong support extended by Bart Dominic of the T7 Media House, I would like to thank the T7 for also uh, covering this live uh, 
uh, on YouTube. This webinar has also been given a live telecast on Big FM 98.3 radio station. For that, I would like to express my sincere thanks to RJ Bob. Today's seminar would not have been possible, but for the behind the scenes support and hard work put up by some very important people. Sincere thanks goes to Professor Amanda Tongper, Department of English, St. Anthony's College for beautifully hosting the program. Special thanks goes to Professor Nathaniel Majao, Department of Mass Communication and Video Production, St. Anthony's College for all the technical support and for helping us webcast this webinar through Zoom as well as college YouTube channel. The webinar is, it, uh, it is what it is today due to the hard work put up by a team from the zoology department. I would therefore express my thanks to all my colleagues for their work. A special thanks goes to Professor Jeremy Enns Aim, organizing secretary for this webinar for giving his absolute best to ensure today's program would be a success, even though that resulted in many sleepless nights for him. Thank you so much, sir. Finally, this webinar would not have been a successful one if there were no participants in it. I therefore would profusely thank each and every participant who has attended this webinar and actively participated in the question and answer round. I would also like to thank the heads of all the institutions that encourage their faculty and students to participate. I hope that we will be able to host many more webinars in the future, and I believe that you will all continue to participate in them. Thank you so much. Kublai Shibon, Mitela, Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, Carson Teo. And with that, I think we've come to the end of this webinar. A very special thanks once again uh, to all of our panelists and especially to the attendees who stayed on till the very end. Uh, once again, thank you so much on behalf of St. Anthony's. Uh, we greet you a very good afternoon and uh, take care, stay safe. Thank you. Yeah,